Einen schönen guten Morgen hier zum letzten Tag der Privacy Week ich an Saal 1. Ich heiße alle Frühaufsteher mit der Vorstellung. Herzlich willkommen. We're getting the wrong audio. We'll try to get it fixed. Um, wir haben heute wieder ein tolles Programm. Wir haben letzten Tag. We have a great program for the last day. At least that's what we think. Uh, we hope you see the same, same way. We start with two experts. Uh, about tracking and podcasts. Why uh, we can actually track in podcasts and what is tracked in podcasts, that is something you're going to learn now from Jinx and McLemon. Give them a great applause. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. We're here. We don't have any slides yet. Let's see. No, oh, well, we'll wait. Just uh, press some buttons. It's working. Yay, there's one. Yeah. Well, uh, so my name is Claudia Totzman Koch. Uh, on the internet, you also know me as Jinx. I'm an author and a podcaster. I Currently, I have five uh, podcast projects, like four on my own and one I regularly attempt. Um, I'm allowed to do such two things about uh, data privacy and data policy. Um, I have some certificates about that. I've made some courses for that. Sorry, I don't have enough coffee yet. Uh, I worked some time uh, in uh, project management and in web development, so I know how this stuff works from the other side, not just from a uh, browser side. Uh, well, and what else did I put here? Well, um, and I'm part of the KS Computer Club uh, Vienna, okay. and I'm a week. And it's my honor as well. I'm a system administrator, and my focus is on uh, encryption and uh, encrypted communication and uh, privacy. And I'm kind of addicted to podcasts. I'm not producing any podcasts, but I am a, a quite unprofessional professional guest in quite some uh, projects. Because we are talking about podcasts, um, sometimes even in, 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 third, um, in third speed. So, what is a podcast? Who here in the audience knows who a podcast is? Oh, people are raising their hands. It's a third. Can you give us like a microphone yeah. for the audience? Not yet, but then. So, a third in the audience uh, does know what a podcast is or is even listening to some. So, how would we define a podcast? Hmm. Well, it's audio, that's mm -hmm. clear. Uh, audio file, which uh, you usually find on this uh, so-called mm -hmm. internet uh, and can download it from there and then listen to it. Yeah. But there are some catches in there, because currently there are some uh, different definitions of podcast where we would say yeah, that's actually not really defined, uh, doesn't really is a podcast. Exactly. There are some criteria which do are essential for a real podcast. So there obviously is uh, some kind of audio file. And it's also relevant that it has to be uh, publicly available, uh, free of charge. Free of charge, as in free to download. And there is no timely restriction on when to download the episodes. So there, are, there is an archive, and I can access the the podcasts from a year ago, and they are not depublic depublicized anymore. Yeah. So, so after a week when they're, when they're gone, uh, some... Uh, if it's radio play length and <coughs> I've missed an episode and I can't download it anymore, then I can basically forget the whole thing. And, and no DRM. So there is no digital restriction management, digital rights management. There are no restrictions on where to play it. You can play it on any device without any other company, which is kind of, which can kind of turn off your audio with uh, the encryption keys, with removing the encryption keys. So this is the, the, the uh, definition of a podcast. 
just for the audience, is this approximately what you think a podcast is? Yeah, okay, so there are a lot of nods in the audience. So where do we find podcasts if, uh, if I'm looking or if I'm interested in podcasts? Well, you know, they're actually podcast search engines, really. So it's not just iTunes, uh, which is still the biggest, um, and there are a lot of podcast apps which actually access contents uh, via iTunes, but there's also food. So, P-H-Y-T, as a podcast search engine, it's a project from Germany. And there's also panopticum.io as a search engine for podcast, which is an Austrian project, actually. So, uh, Panopticum has already been shown on the Austrian podcast um, community meeting. And uh, it is quite organized, and you can find it on panopticum.org. You can filter on categories, and you will for sure find something. There are podcasts for nearly every domain, <laughs> even about podcasts. Um, there are also some problems with some archive mm -hmm. of podcasts we have. Well, currently, podcasts again uh, have some kind of boom, in quotes. Um, this has, uh, so this also leads to marketing people and agencies uh, getting into podcasts and also people who want to uh, like use, make money from podcasts and also they found uh, podcast archives and now start using commercial um, productions which they want to get in those archives. So we do have, so this, the podcast uh, landscape gets kind of muddy. Um, if you if you don't know yet, uh, in Germany we have uh, a 15 year old podcast culture, so that's nothing totally new here. So I've just been to the uh, Frankfurt Book Fair, um, and there have been many panels, some panels about podcasts, uh, where mainly American um, publishing houses have been there, which talk and talked about it. And one of those American, uh, well, one of those American said, um, well, in Germany there's no there's no podcasts yet, so we can easily just uh, roll out our marketing because now when I'm looking on Google in English uh, to look for podcasts in Germany, of course they don't find anything. Well, um, uh, well, I didn't like blow up the discussion at that point, but it's pretty difficult to listen to. I usually would say at this point, if you're, are you are you realizing? Uh, no, she didn't. She didn't. Yeah. Unfortunately, I didn't say that. Yeah. yeah. But uh, we're not only marketing people trying to get into podca podcasts, but we do have 15 years of podcast culture in German-speaking uh, region. So, and as we said, we have uh, panopticon.io and other uh, podcast search engines. Uh, there you can really look for podcasts uh, according to your interests and like classical podcasts. So, for example, uh, like uh, the two of us were interested in, in uh, data privacy, and if you're looking for that, you would find uh, Claudia's uh, data privacy um, podcast. <laughs> I've already been in, in the show. For example, data protection for podcasters. How could, how could that happen? You find a link to a website, and on that website you can look on the list of episodes which have been published previously, and you can comment if you liked or if you had feedback on an episode, and you can directly listen to the episode within the browser. Uh, so the data protection podcast, um, this is less often used, um, but uh, as I said, I have some other podcast projects like the Vienna Writers Podcast, where um, the targets um, are other authors and they uh, listen to podcasts a lot more uh, in the browser than user than listeners and to. What you can also do on the website is you can... Uh, register for the feed and you get updates automatically in case of a new episode so you don't have to pay for the registration so it just uh, it just updates automatically and new feeds new episodes are coming in 
and we prepared something. So, um, this is uh, my podcast, Statistics, uh, which is from the Data Protection Podcast. Um, it's like an overview of the last 30 days. It's, the screenshot is like two or three days old. Um, so you see which episodes are downloaded most and listened. And the interesting part for us is, uh, for this talk, is that you can see 67% um, actually listen through the feed and 33% listen uh, via the browser. And you can also see in uh, over there which clients are used and which directly access the podcast. So podcast apps, we will talk about in a minute. Uh, they like to uh, well hide a bit so that it's not that uh, easy to find them. So Oprah, for example, I'm not really sure if people use act actually use the Oprah browser like was it more than 30% using the Oprah browser, listening to my browser? I'm not sure about that. 19% uh, podcast radio addict, that's something I would uh, actually believe. Just HTTP, I'm not sure which client is that. Uh, podcasts, 6% uh, is Apple Podcasts, unknown are those that are totally obfuscated. Uh, well, then you see, okay, some others. Um, which seem um, legit. So this is like a general overview. Um, this is all the data I actually get, all the tracking and quotes data instead of, uh, and, and uh, statistics I get about my podcast. So I don't have any uh, more defined data. So I don't know that someone uh, from the audience has seen this episode until this uh, minute as she stopped listening at that point, etc. So I am totally content with this kind of statistics you see up there. Actually, I would be content with knowing which uh, podcast, which episodes have been downloaded how many times so that I know what is interesting for my uh, audience. Um, you also see that all the uh, episodes have get, are downloaded again and again, so the archive is uh, used a lot. So, for example, the uh, the one we're about e-voting with uh, Peter Pukatova from Technical University of Vienna, uh, it's, it's older than a year, but it's still uh, downloaded a lot and listened to a lot. Um, so, I suppose it's also listened to. I noticed the downloads. Um, I hope it helps people. I don't know, of course. Um, but this is something that will be, for me, that will be totally sufficient. I don't need more statistics, uh, well, which is different for marketing uh, people who get like erotic feelings when they can see uh, statistics about at which minute people stopped listening to certain episodes. Exactly. So it's a simply cumulated statistics which is not uh, making any conclusions about the individual and that's uh, totally enough to get an overview. Well, so if you look into a single episode, it doesn't look that much different. Um, you see 99% got it. This one uh, episode we're looking at here got per, got them per feed. Just one person looked them by the web, uh, listened to them on the web. Um, and you can also see uh, which clients are used for this uh, single episode. So it's also not uh, much more uh, detailed than the accumulated statistics you've seen before. So here you see antenna pod, radio addict, podcast, which is Apple podcast, overcast, mobile safari, unknown. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if mobile safari is actually mo maybe, uh, again, Apple podcasts, which may hide as mobile safari, unknown, clear, and Android browser. Uh, Opera and whatever. So you see, you're seeing some numbers. Uh, we also have uh, great support from Tim Prittler from the Meta Ebene. Uh, we ask him whenever someone ha is there anyone who has a good um, overview of free podcasts and who is going to who is listening to it and and. Uh, so we asked him because he has a huge overview of the German uh, podcast landscape. And he said, well, yeah, again, you see mobile safari, podcast, what's the podcast, podcast. So you see the apps are pretty similar, but not everything. Um, not everything appeared in my podcast, but this is uh, like our base, basic ground truth from which we worked what, and, and f tried to find out what is out there, which apps we should look at. And that's where we like started stumbling. So into for me, it was interesting 
that about a third is listening through the web browser and without a specific app. That was uh, unexpected. And that is a topic which um, which we're thinking about, and um, it's tracking. What you already know about tracking with cookies and, and CP pixels. And at the Privacy Week, we had a lot of workshops and talks about that and what's possible, how it's done, and how you, you could defend against it. But uh, yeah, it's a browser, and it plays audio, which is just a simple website. And by an American, uh, when on an American website, it could look like this. So on the right side, you can see U matrix, which shows that there is originally a little bit of HTML and style sheets and CSS, and you don't really see anything else from the background because I'm not, I'm not uh, loading anything else. And a JavaScript, and from that's it from the original server. Everything else is tracking from uh, third-party um, companies, and there is even a, a scroll bar, so uh, you can't even see everything on the screen. How many uh, third-party tracking companies are, are loaded here? That is quite common in you know in uh, American podcasts. And there is a lot of tracking and advertisement. You kind of hear parts in, in the advertisement. Advertisement, and sometimes they just cut into the their um, their advertisements in the podcasts and then serve it to their users, like in the embedded. Um, so, <coughs> you have very interesting podcast, and during the audio, it said, if you heard ads in this podcast, they are not coming from us. So, some podcasters have taken up the issue. <coughs> And uh, these people are just doing it for the love of the issue. And uh, so it is quite conspicuous that this happens with US productions in in the German area. It's less, less tragic. Um, except for those doing a podcast via the Anchor app. So Anchor also puts in advertisements into your podcast. So they offer for podcasters, you get lifetime uh, free host uh, hosting you know whenever you hear a uh, free lifetime hosting uh, this sounds fishy and uh, they they are financed so they make money by getting ads by giving putting ads into your podcast and you as a podcaster are not allowed you don't have a choice which ads uh, will be in your podcast so for example there can be uh, political ads from parties you don't like or you would actually not vote in your podcast but you have no uh, influence on that whatsoever um, and for British um, companies or British productions uh, because Tim Pritloff said uh, the pod, uh, he suggested the podcast or recommended the podcast Remaniacs and the Remaniacs also had um, uh, well they want to remain in Britain um, and they have advertisements as well and I got a German ad in this British podcast which well okay so and then in the middle you get the the, the British uh, talk and the British podcast and in the end again you get the uh, German uh, advertisements which is pretty weird yeah and uh, we got, uh, in, in the web we have all the tracking, which is there anyways, and there's also the, uh, the matters on, on how to defend against it with your tracking blocker, with your block origin, with your matrix, disconnect me, which you can just use against this tracking, which is good, but we got curious. What's happening in the apps? Because uh, about 60 or 70 percent of podcasts are consumed via an app. Privacy International has been looking on apps uh, in general. Um, and they found out that uh, apps that are heavily used on Android last year at the Congress, the Privacy International made a talk about that. Um, and they actually also 
um, they, they just distributed their knowledge and the data. Um, we looked at it for iOS for today. So we. So this is a just an iOS test device. Have, uh, it's a, just an iPhone 5S, which has been cleaned. There are only the podcast devices on it, which we wanted to test. Oh. So what are those apps? So what are those apps? They, you get them in the App Store, you can download them, some are for free, some you have to pay a few euros. And they are responsible for the registration and of, of so this I'm interested in this podcast and it's automatically downloading the new episode it captures what you've been listening to what you could uh, watch next or what you could listen to next and uh, show the the show notes of the specific episodes and that's super comfy because you can just what uh, listen to the next episode when uh, when on the road uh, what you just uh, walked over completely is the general basic that an app is a piece of software that runs on a device, in that case a mobile device, and um, it has one or most likely multiple channels to this internet. Exactly. It's a, it's a small computer with applications on it. And because such an app uh, actually has uh, very much similarities to uh, a website uh, in principle. We thought, well, great, well, Privacy International did something already about that for Android devices, so let's look at it for iOS. And uh, let's look at what is actually in there, because you just hear, oh yeah, the apps, they are connecting to Facebook and to Google and whatever. And so we thought, well, yeah, but what do they actually do, really, in, in detail? Yeah. So is it happening, and why? Yeah. And so we, uh, well, worked with a virtual machine from Privacy International. Um, we have a nice so it's podcatcher apps, and they look like this on your phone. Yeah, it's apps. You've all seen this. And a Privacy International has a virtual machine for intercepting traffic. So we do have a USB stick with uh, some antennas and we open a wireless and we connect the phone with this wireless, with this Wi-Fi, and we can see all the traffic the phone is creating and we can look at it, including encrypted traffic which we kind of broke up and now we can uh, look at all the traffic so this is our test setup um, together with this virtual machine from privacy international which they provide so uh, this can actually be recreated by anyone uh, who is able to well uh, open a v virtual machine and uh, is able to put in a usb stick and uh, start a telephone so that's pretty easy so you can try this at home the tracking, okay, there is tracking. Um, due to the statistics of the apps which are used, we selected some applications um, in order to not escalate it completely in the beginning. We uh, were looking on 13 apps, including the Apple Podcasts apps. We were focusing on iOS, on Android. Some other people already did this. And there has not been such an investigation on iOS yet. Podcasts is on uh, iOS out of the box. And we have Instacast and Pocket Casts, SoundCloud, Spotify, Stitcher, and TuneIn. And yeah, some commercial like Spotify, commercial providers like Spotify realized, oh, they could make money. So podcasts that are actually somewhere else you can get them for free, but there you can get them also for money. Well, um, and then we arrived at a point uh, for, well, just looking through this data and uh, analyzing the data. And so where do we, so whether there's pot, so and then he said, uh, I'm no, I'm never going to uh, listen to a, a podcast via app because uh, they're connecting to so many different devices, uh, yeah. services. We, we found a lot of stuff. 
tracking. Um, so the tracking, it's like a Chinese curse. curse. Uh, it was quite interesting, actually. And which podcast apps are tracking in which way? On the left side, you see the privacy statement. Of the individual supplier. So that's primarily for visualization, so how extensive the privacy uh, data is and how much they say about the um, data. What is inside of it? So the podcast is quite calm. It, it synchronizes which feeds you have registered to via iCloud uh, and iTunes and all the other I, I, iOS devices you have. Um, with all the subscriptions, uh, what have you been listening to already? It's completely encrypted, and uh, actually there is nothing else, which is quite positive. It's uh, one of the only ones, or one of the few ones. And everything you are using, which uh, there is the mandatory communication, and nothing else. And that's quite nice. Mm. I thought it was very nice for my example for my parents on telephone. Uh, see, yeah, you can listen podcast here. So um, uh, there was my podcast. Overcast. Uh, it was quite interesting. If you are breaking up the TLS, the encrypted communications, you are the monster in the middle, so on the one hand you tell him I'm the server, and for the other hand you, you're playing client, so you're kind of um, creating the, the certificates. And uh, I can tell the client that, yeah, okay, this certificate is okay, and Overcast still realizes that this is a, a man-in-the-middle attack, it uh, realizes that there is a man in the middle, which is really nice. And so it um, rejected a lot of stuff. It realized that there was a man in the middle and then not did specific stuff, which was quite nice. So there was explicit certificate pinning. But on the other hand, we couldn't see a lot, which, is, which it was doing. So it is also, it seems like they are seeing everything that's over the overcast server, but well, so um, terms and conditions and data protection statements were pretty long. It wasn't that bad. Okay, Castro, next one. So uh, you see, privacy statement suddenly gets longer. So we thought about uh, doing it long, uh, making the, 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 the order after the length of the privacy it is statement. Longer. We it also ha uh, realized that there was TLS interception and did not do some stuff, but still connects to some services. Uh, it definitely has amplitude, which is some kind of marketing analytics uh, thing. It uh, has. Uh, Microsoft app monitoring included, uh, which, which uh, kind of tracks, which features are used and stuff. So you're you're um, looked at quite thoroughly, and it uh, connects to iTunes. So uh, which is okay because uh, when looking at the directory, you also have to connect to the directory. So with the marketing analytics and the crash detections, they do not realize that there is a man in the middle attack. So they just um, they just talk uh, to their servers. Um, they are not. So this can be a problem. How Mary can actually hijack the app or maybe even the operating system, um, if it's pocket cost. Yeah, with the tracking it gets a bit more scarier. It is connecting to the PocketCast server to refresh the feeds, so it does not directly communicate with the with the servers of the podcasts, but with PocketCast's servers itself. And uh, it kind of says, "Yeah, I have this ID, and give me the new version." That is nice for performance reasons, but. On the other hand, their servers exactly know which feeds you're subscribed to and which erotics podcasts uh, you are listening to. Well, um, it also connected to Google Play, which is for an iOS a little bit strange. Why that? Um, also, Google Firebase. Firebase is again such a crash reporting service. Um, also, cloud messaging, push. 
by Firebase, something else from Google. And device provisioning by Google. So, as Pocket Casts is available for Android as well, so maybe they're sharing some code base which uh, then uh, creates that connection. But there is a lot of Google inside of that. Okay, With that's kind of really scary Stitcher. Uh, that's a, Stitcher is a directory service which is based in the US. They do have uh, an app. I, I'm, I'm questioned on so I'm what, myself, what is the actual means or the use of this thing. So I get I pay twelve dollars, and what do I get? I get interception, I get tracking, surveillance, and uh, being monitored. But I don't get any contents because Stitcher doesn't create any contents. They're just a directory. They're just analyzing their users, sell it, and just use the content from other people. But as a podcaster, you can uh, put you well give your feed in, into uh, into Stitcher, and the feed the user base of Stitcher act will actually also get your podcast. Um, as we said, everything you listen to over Stitcher app, well, will be uh, analyzed accordingly, and uh, the, you see the privacy statement is now very long. Okay, let's see, what do we have? Flory.com, a personal, personalized app analytics and profiling, um, localytics.com, that's app analytics, Facebook already in there, directly Facebook. So Facebook is contacted. The, it's, it's telling Facebook, hey, you just uh, subscribed to that podcast. So it's pretty nice in your shadow profile on Facebook. So it really completes your shadow profile whenever, if you ever decide to use Facebook, which you should. Uh, okay, I didn't understand that. Something else, a uh, user support thingy. Uh, why they are contacting it uh, without an explicit support request? I don't know. Adjust.com, some other marketing analytics through blah blah. Uh, iCloud? Okay, well, uh, iCloud uh, for uh, setting sync, uh, especially if you're using it on multiple devices. Google Analytics is in there. Localytics, another app analytics thing. Now we continue to Google Fonts, tech, Google Tag Manager, Google Ads. Okay, so really uh, a lot of stuff uh, that's going out to Google. New Relic, that was something I didn't know about. Yeah, they are doing real-time monitoring. So you get on which millisecond you pressed play, in which episode was the player exactly, have I been playing forward, or be, how does it in the, uh, when is it in the, for, in the background, when is it in the foreground, and there is really something watching uh, over your shoulder in real time. Yeah, I, I see. I, I see people uh, doing things on their telephones. So who is currently just removing Stitcher? Just asking. But we're not done yet. Um, what is this bum and our data net? Bum and our data dot net belongs to you, Relic. Oh. So that happens a lot, actually. You had to find out who is this, actually, those data mining companies. And a lot of them, uh, for, uh, I had to uh, configure my ad blocker a lot because um, they were blocked all along. And which happened a, lo a lot was that the application opened a connection to such a tracking uh, company, but there was no website. So if you wanted to access the website, they just have an FBI on the website. The actual company is on a whole different URL, um, on a whole different name, so they want to uh, not, want you not to find out who it belongs to. And it, that belongs to New Relic. Oh, great. Uh, something else, double click, well, again, the adverti advertising network of Google, so it's not just marketing, but also advertising, and Apple Push is also there, but that's yeah. two pieces back to I expected that as well, so when you have a new episode, um, yeah, it does not come from Stitcher, so you had to be, con uh, they had to contact it. 
And yeah. So um, in the privacy statement, it, this is the part that says uh, what we are going giving to third parties. So it, it, it just says um, will be forwarded to third parties. There's no longer statement in there. It just says your data will be shared with third parties. There is no privacy statement, privacy statement at all. We could just couldn't find it. Maybe uh, I just, uh, in the whole drama of the Privacy Week, uh, maybe I just uh, overlooked it, but at least I didn't find it spontaneously. Uh, well, but we've seen uh, Graph, Facebook, Podbeam.com, okay, that's uh, Google Play again, again, something like shared code base, most likely. With, a, uh, with an Android base, appmeasurement.com for analytics, crash reports, um, and other stuff like that. And uh, Google Firebase, Google Ads, a very interesting Art19, which is a service where they do all your advertisements. That's the ones who then cut into advertisements into your podcast at the beginning or at the end. And it sends to all those services. The version of your operating system, the version of the app, what's the device uh, called? They generated unique IDs, so you can't even um, change the name or stuff. Um, and something you have, you, you put a notice in there, that said that's the US version of the app. Uh, some unique IDs that is done by this US version. Player FM, that's also um, US subscription directory it's scary as well it just connects to YouTube for whatever reason so it's Google Play Google Firebase um, Google Casts which is the Google podcast directory it uh, gets some fonts from Google so you see that they kind of include parts of their application as a website, which then includes all the tracking from the website itself. It also connects to Player FM. Well, that's uh, to be expected. It also connects automatically to Stripe. Um, so um, it doesn't matter whether I tell it uh, beforehand whether I want to use the payment services or not, but whatever, it still connects to Stripe anyway. Because maybe you can use it. And in addition, there is Double Click, which is Google and YouTube. And there's Art19 as well, and Intercom IO, which is a user support chat system. It's just connected right away without any explicit support request. Hmm. Well. Plex. Plex was something that was new to me, I didn't know. Yeah, they don't have support for podcasts that long. You maybe know Plex from your NAS at home and some home videos on your on your NAS, which you can then watch uh, via the network on your TV, which is quite comfy. But it also connects to Facebook, Google Casts, to some other marketing analytics, some other marketing analytics and their own analytics via analytics.plex.tv to Google Play. And they are sending the name of the device, which you can accept in a way because you kind of show the username, but it also generates unique IDs for tracking what, where, when. Anchor. Uh, anchor. Uh, again, uh, connects automatically to Facebook.com, Facebook Graph, Adjust.com, so mobile marketing again, we have Google Analytics, well, a double click, more Google, more Google Net Network Network, and automatically also Stripe, doesn't matter whether you opted into payment services or not, CloudFront, um, Amazon CDN. Yeah, so probably because parts of the user interface are loaded from a website and built from websites, because it's uh, sp specifically in the U.S. CloudFront uh, uh, is by Amazon and it's very um, prevalent in the U.S. It's maybe a bug in the analysis, but uh, also Reddit is connected. Oh, uh, just about Anchor, one last thing. You also have the possibility as a listener to insert comments to an episode for you by yourself, and so other people which host the podcast can listen to those audio comments. Uh, but 
Well, whenever you do that, um, you have sensitive data in there, you have a biometric data actually, um, and it's also sent to Anchor and to everyone else that is listening in. And the interesting, interesting thing with Anchor is that you cannot subscribe to any podcast, but only to specific uh, podcasts from Anchor, which is kind of Mastodon for audio. But Mastodon, at least you get the RSS feed just if you're not on Mastodon. It's, it's, the idea is interesting, but the, but the implementation is e-tracking. And for people who are doing music on, on SoundCloud, they kind of do podcasts as well now, even though it's, there's no technical foundation yet. Well, you see again the privacy statement in terms of conditions getting longer and longer. Praise.com is something I didn't know about. Yeah, that was new to me as well. It's marketing, profiling of data. And there is a lot of companies actually who are doing that. Facebook, they are also having their own telemetry service, which they're connecting to. It's Google Play, Firebase, and they have app measurement. They are connecting to Apple iTunes as well. The server xp.apple.com, we couldn't really find out what it's doing exactly. The existence is documented by Apple, but there's the, the, its usage is not uh, documented. And in that case, it just doesn't say any purpose. I just again, we've also had that before. What's that? Scorecardresearch.com. I also don't know them. That's also a big profiling marketing company. Okay, I didn't understand that one. Sorry, some other clicking company. Mode app was funny with mode ads. Mode ads. Uh, I wanted to take a look at the website, and there actually is some responding a response, but it just says, "Yeah, we're an ad company, so maybe you want to turn off your uh, ad blocker." But yeah, no. Okay, so we're uh, running out of time, so we have to give, to be quicker. Um, so tune in. Yeah, most of them we already talked about. Data.io, so again, you have a long list of surfs, branch.io, Google Play, app measurement, t.app.flyer.com, ads.mopub.com, Google Analytics, Patnai, Graph, Facebook, Google, Facebook, Firebase, Podcast, Amazon Ads. Amazon Ads is something that's interesting. Yeah. We have to scroll on our notes because it's so many. Uh, reports, radio time com, scorecard research com, security RM, imr worldwide dot com for monitoring purposes, adsys dot com, branch io, apps flyer, etc. So there's a lot. And there is the more than 20. Again, it, it is a directory, they don't do any content at all, they just use co uh, content from people or other people and then they even uh, and they are even they just judge you money for that um, and for Stitcher again it's the same thing as a podcaster you can insert your like free uh, uh, podcast in there and then you then others pay for that other people than you because all the music services realize that there are podcasts Spotify is one of them it's uh, not our definition of podcast because they're not free, free uh, publicly available, but they have adjust Facebook and their own analytics of Spotify itself. Uh, you can see that uh, terms and conditions are not, and privacy statement are not getting longer and longer. And again, they just have this small sentence, oh, we're sending data to third parties, full stop. And we just included that app because I still use that app, which is Instacast. It is not sending anything to anyone. So when you open the directory, it connects to the directory. If you subscribe to a feed, it directly gets the feed from the feed's website and nothing else. Where is the downside? Well, the downside is it's gone. Martin Herring created a wonderful podcatcher, but unfortunately they were not willing to pay like three euros uh, for a tracking free podcatching app 
Unfortunately, that's why there is no privacy statement or data protection or terms and conditions. Thank you very much for Martin Herring for that app. It was the the most privacy. Uh, well, uh, we're respecting, respecting podcasting, uh, podcasting has been there. And we already got the note for <laughs> Walzer's on, so we're out of time. What are the... the what did we learn from it? What Most from apps it? track. US, app tr US apps track uh, in a, on a very scary scale. Um, and everything that's like just directory services like Stitcher, uh, Spotify, whatever, um, they really have scary tracking and disgusting strapping. It definitely isn't beautiful or is it nice. And better are the, the apps from the German area and their productions. It, uh, people don't like the ads and do, do, donate to do donations to those to. podcasts because then I don't need ads. The more marketing and stuff you it's on it, um, the more tracking is in it. Yeah, coaching is also a big one for give, give away. Buy the podcasting apps for a few euros and they're better than the free ones with all their tracking. Problem is you already have all the web tracking and in the apps you cannot just install a, a, an ad blocker because you don't have the ability to. And there is the specific tracking and, uh, and, uh, in case there are show notes, um, they often uh, redirect to a browser, so you actually access the website and then you get everything that's on the website, which again is web tracking. Exactly. What we could not look at, which would be quite interesting, uh, in iOS you can install system-wide ad blockers and it would be interesting how far this ad blocking gets and uh, how far those apps are restricted then. That would be interesting to look on. So we're coming to an end. Big thanks to Datacop and Astra for helping us uh, with the research as hardware as well as software an analysis and and all oh, I say software for analysis thanks for that that was really really helpful for us without you that wouldn't be possible exactly and if you have any questions uh, we are here for the whole day uh, tomorrow maybe for um, well uh, cleaning up so you can also help us tomorrow with cleaning up and the we're both in the Fediverse the most comfy instance in the Fediverse, which is chaos.social. And now we say thanks a lot for listening. Applause. <coughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Great talk. Um, when you see all those tracking measurements uh, together, uh, it's really a big thing. Are there any questions? Uh, uh, people don't do it still listening to podcasts? No question, seems like it. Okay, well, then again I say thank you for the talk. Uh, and they will, we're now doing a short break. Uh, big applause again for them. They've earned it. They deserve it. <laughs>